in an age where information is suppressed and controlled and a global epidemic is rampant. We need to ask these questions. What is the coronavirus actually made up of? And how does it function? When and from where did it really originate? Is there a bigger story, one that's not being reported, or at least not being reported correctly and accurately? And if there is, who was involved? How is the CCP or Chinese Communist Party involved? And what dark intentions did it have in the beginning? Who was the very first human infected by this virus? We'll revisit the strange circumstances around Patient Zero. How is China controlling this epidemic now? And did you know that they are using strict wartime disciplines to control its citizens? To understand the big picture, we need to dig deep into history, connections, and expose certain figures and groups. So get ready for another mind-blowing episode on COVID-19, the coronavirus. Hey everybody, welcome back to our coronavirus series. Now, the official report is that patient zero, like the first person who had the virus, was a 70-year-old man suffering from dementia and who was bedridden. And had bat legs coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Maybe. No. He fell ill on December 1st, 2019, one week earlier than what was reported by the Wuhan health authorities. They say he contracted the virus from the Wuhan market, but we wanna know how a man with dementia and who was bedridden and lived four to five stops away if you were traveling on public transportation system got the virus. Now, according to Wu Wenjun, a co-author of the Lancet study, talked about this man in a BBC Chinese article and, and also stated that since he was bedridden, he never went outdoors. So already this narrative brings up many questions and doesn't seem to make sense. So we started asking ourselves, was this a cover up for patient zero and why? Now we had Cindy, one of our team members, dig into this and she found something that if true, would change a lot of things about how this virus was spread. Enter a YouTuber by the name of Stone Story, who has around 260K subs and does mostly vlogging videos on various different topics. But recently he's covering all about the virus and has come up with a clever way of avoiding censorship. He seems to be well connected to a lot of people, but always starts off with his videos saying, I had a crazy dream last night. So he will say he had a crazy dream, and in my dream, I talked to a doctor who told me about so-and-so, and then he will go on to finish what the doctor told him. So he gets some hateful comments from pro-CCP people, but he states in the video that this is just a dream. You don't have to believe me. <laughs> That's actually really smart. It is. So I wish YouTube would listen to us. <laughs> this is one of the ways he voids the censorship, right? So in one of these so-called dreams, around January 10th, he was told by a doctor in this so-called dream, that the real patient zero was a woman named Huang Yingling, who is in her mid to late 20s. He was told that there were four samples of the virus that was sent to the Wuhan Virology Institute, and this girl was assigned to bring it to the center. After dropping them off, she was never again seen or heard from. No one knows how she died, and no one knows exactly what happened. However, the girl's body showed up at a cremation, and the person who burned her body now, this is gonna sound kind of weird, but had an old eye issue, like something was wrong with his eye, and got, and then through con interacting with his body, got the virus unknowingly. Now, what is weird is the doctor who officially died recently, the one who blew the whistle on the whole coronavirus, and now the CCP saying that he actually didn't die and is in a treatment center, was the doctor who took care of this guy with this eye issue. Okay, that sounds a little complicated, but some of you people are like, right now thinking, well, this guy is still alive because I read it on a website, but the CCP always lies about everything. Yeah. So most likely this dude, we're not positive, but it's like, we're like 99% well, sure. Well, they already reported he's dead. He's dead. He's and dead. now they're saying, oh yeah. no, he didn't die. Because like, yeah, it just brings up too many questions now. It's right. like, how did this guy die, right? Whatever so. they can do to avoid yeah. pressure. After our YouTube friend Stone Story heard about this girl, he went to look for her, but there was actually no trace. 
All social media accounts were deleted. Reporters even went to the center and asked if there was any record of this girl working there, and they said they had none. However, soon a photo showed up online on Chinese websites with her team taken at the Wuhan Virology Institute in 2018 for the Chinese New Year, which would be coming into 2019. Along with screenshots from the website of the Institute showing a photo of each of her teammates, but with her photo and info missing. In other words, on the website, it had it, all her team, and then there was a spot just for her, but it was gone. So according to people who did the research on this girl in 2015, she graduated and got a master's degree. After this got public, there is now a WeChat account with her name and text messages saying it's her and she's alive and well, but these have no photos, no links to anything, and it seems like it was done to cover up what actually happened to her. As of right now, this is all the information we have on patient zero, but we'll keep you guys up to date as more information comes out. Yeah, because. I don't think there's going to be any stop to these videos, Ben. Definitely not. Censorship of COVID-19. The censorship in China is getting extremely harsh. In fact, you could risk your life just by making a phone call or uploading a video. The Epoch Times had an article stating that the Chinese regime deployed 1,600 internet trolls to suppress information on coronavirus. Also, Jennifer Zhang, who wrote a book and starred in the movie called Free China, which is all about her life in China and being jailed and tortured for being a Falun Gong practitioner, has been tweeting information nonstop about the virus. Actually, a lot of you are probably unknowingly following her because she's <laughs> been doing a lot of great work. She has. So if you want to keep up with the situation in China, she would be a good person to follow. Also, for anyone who thinks the socialist communist ideology should be implemented here in the US, you should read this notice that she posted. <laughs> it says that in the city of Hubei province, they are trying to crack down and control the information leaking to the public. It's a notice by the Health Commission of Xiandao City, which states, in order to execute the wartime disciplines of the epidemic prevention and control, we have the following announcements. In a nutshell, number one states, no taking photos and publishing to any platform. Number two, discussing the epidemic situation and voicing your personal opinions in a group chat are strictly prohibited. Only official sources are okay to post. <laughs> Three, retweeting info that hasn't been approved by officials is prohibited. Also, no believing or spreading rumors. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Number four, doctors and patients are forbidden to give interviews. Then it goes on to say anyone who violates these rules will be dealt with quickly and severely and their supervisors will also be held accountable. Now, YouTube and Facebook are deleting a ton of videos coming out of China with police officers beating, arresting, and nearly killing people just for not wearing a mask or violating curfew. In one video, a Chinese woman was being thrown into a police van screaming that she just wants to die. There is a video on BitChute that combined all of these videos and is over 45 minutes long. Because what's happened is that these videos are being deleted on YouTube and someone compiled them and then made this BitChute one long video of all of these. There are so many videos coming out that the CCP are now arresting people and YouTube and Facebook are helping to delete these videos. Like they're aiding the CCP in this. Calling you out YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. In our last video, we mentioned a guy in Wuhan who published a video talking about the situation and the virus in Wuhan. He is now missing and his family doesn't even know where he is. Also, a lot of people are talking about the woman in this video who is in an elevator in a hospital who just found out she has the virus and starts spitting and coughing all over the buttons, like on the elevator. A lot of people thought that she was some satanic worshiper or it's the deep state pushing these people to do that. But people outside of China need to understand what it's like living in China. For one, the CCP wishes to destroy all hope in people. The CCP is the only hope for them. Like that's what the CCP preaches. So people are very warped. Jealousy is out of control in China. And why do you have this? I should have this. Right. You know? Yeah. So growing up in communism, everyone believes that every, everything should be equal equal living, equal share. If someone gets something good, then 
everything, everyone should have the same thing. But in return, if someone has something bad happen, then that person believes everyone should share in that too. You see what's going on? Since the woman just found out she had the virus out of jealousy, she felt everyone should suffer the same as her. It would be like thinking, why did I get this virus and others didn't? This is so unfair, so let me make it fair. I'll just make everyone sick and force people to suffer the way that I am because I shouldn't have to go through this. So this is a, actually a very common mindset in Chinese people and most Western people could never understand this. I mean, how many comments after we posted those videos were like, why? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. And you just can't understand it. And, and there's a big difference between like Taiwanese people and, and mainland Chinese people in Hong Kong as well. You know, Hong Kong and Taiwanese people are very similar to the people in the West where they wouldn't understand these kinds of things either. This is just like being under the rule of the CCP and communism for so long. It and just can't causes to people. say this enough. This has nothing to do with Chinese people. This has to do with the pressure they've been under yeah, this, for a hundred years. We are, we are trying to help the Chinese people. This is focusing on what the CCP is doing to people. 100%. Right. But I mean, going back to this, I mean, unless you're like really worship Satan and part of the deep state that wishes to eliminate more than half the world's population, then to most people, this is very strange. Correct. The documentary you've been waiting for. There's some amazingly advanced technologies. A lot of technology that could help is being held back. Are you ready for it? The technology that we know and love today, such as the internet, our smartphones, it's all derived from extraterrestrial technology that did not originate on Earth at all. They also had help from extraterrestrials as well. Making connections. MK Ultra was another top secret operation in the US. The question is, was this the real reason why he was killed? Was Lee Harvey Oswald just a scapegoat? With humans and technology. These advanced technologies are being built and used uh, in order to create a larger network to keep control over the population of this planet. This is why this is such a critical time, as far as technology goes. So this brings up a really important question. What is the purpose? I had got um, poisoned a year and a half ago, and then I had like shooting pains in my lymph nodes, that in my neck right here and under my armpits, and he had said, you have no idea what I'm capable of. But he was right, I had no idea what he was capable of. All is revealed. The, the total body of information that we have on the Secret Space Program is quite incredible. It is truly the greatest secret of the globalist elite. We're kind of, as a human race, caught in the middle. It, the technology is out there and we don't know anything about it. But I believe that there are good people within the military and even our government who truly want the truth to be known. The Old World Order, Episode 1, Part 2, coming soon. Well, let's get into prophecies and predictions because this is about to blow your mind. All right, well, next we want to talk about some very odd places that this Wuhan virus shows up in different literature. The first one is Dean Coote's book, The Eyes of Darkness, written in 1981. The book mentions a Chinese military lab outside of the city of Wuhan, where a deadly virus was invented as part of the country's biological weapons warfare program. The virus is named Wuhan 400 and apparently only affects humans. Boom. Pretty weird. That's very weird. A lot of you have been spreading this on social media, so you've heard of this. Yes. And thanks for everyone for sending <laughs> th Thank you everyone for getting 4,000 messages with that book. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah. The other interesting reference is from Lu Bo Win, who lived from 1311 to 1375 and was a Chinese military strategist, philosopher, politician in the Ming Dynasty. His poem is long and predicted many things, including the rise of the Communist Party and Russia. But a part of it talks directly about the Wuhan coronavirus. He wrote 10 worries in the poem. The sixth worry states, quote, I would say about wintertime around September and October. The ninth is one worries the corpses are left unattended. And the tenth and the last worry is one worries how to cross the pig year into the rat year. Now, for those of you who don't know, we just celebrated the Chinese New Year from the pig to the rat. But he also says as the third worry, 
quote, one worries the onset of disaster in Huguang, a region in China that includes Hebei province, which then spread to all provinces across China. Now the capital of Hebei is Wuhan. Yeah, so there seems to be more references in our culture and history, but we are still gathering all of this information. Final thoughts. Yeah, so there's a lot more that we could talk about. Um, for example, this relationship between Xi Jinping, who's the current leader, and Jiang Zemin, and what's going on. Now, the big question that a lot of people talking to a lot, I'm just was talking to so many different people the past few days. And one scenario could be if Jiang Zemin thinks that he's going to lose everything, it's kind of like, Release the bat viruses. <laughs> Seriously, almost, <laughs> right? Now, Xi Jinping is now kind of in a corner because if he comes out, if this is true, if this really was released and Xi Jinping, so Xi Jinping could blame all of this on Zhang and literally put all of this on him, but this would collapse the party 100%. If this came out as true that, hey, mm. somebody actually did this and was the former leader and all these different people are connected and everything. I mean, it's gonna open a world investigation and not just into this, but everything that the CCP has been doing, right? Yeah, we're talking about like Nuremberg trials times. A billion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this, this, is, this, this, is, this is like the end. Yeah. So we're still not 100% sure, you know, and obviously, you can find a lot of connections with Jong related back to the Clintons and all these different things that are going on. So then it brings the whole Western deep state aspect to this too. Now, and a lot of people sort of, actually, I do think people have a bit of a misunderstanding about the deep state. They seem to think the deep state also controls China, but you have to understand China actually has its own deep state. It is its own fully functional walled off deep state and they would happily take over everything if they could. They could. And they I mean, were, or they, and that's no different from yeah. warring families, really. Right? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, and th there's, and there's different aspects to this too. There's also, um, it gets complicated, and this is what we'll say for the next episode, but there's four families that are related to these colored dragon families. They call them like the golden dragon. There's like the white dragon. I think there's like a green dragon Isn't or there whatever. a black dragon? Too? Maybe a black dragon. Yeah. And these are connected to China. Um, they are actually part of what was the KMT before the CCP took Kuomintang. over. Kuomintang. The Kuomintang. And yeah. they're the ones that went to um, Taiwan, actually. Yeah. So there's a lot of question on where their loyalty stays. But then you have also, there's kind of eight, I don't want to say families, but eight heads kind of control the CCP, the central CCP aspect. And Xi Jinping and Zhang and these these guys are all, they've been fighting for a long time. There's oh, been yeah. this like internal battle for extremely long time over control of China and ultimately over the control of the world. Um, this is the goal of the CCP. They really want to take over everything and they've teamed up with Russia and there's a lot, like, especially before Wait, the Cold when? War. Okay, this is before, before the they Cold teamed, War. Yeah, they teamed up. So, Not now. You're, yeah, okay. and there, so this is, again, this is what we're going to kind of bring into, like, the next topic. But there's a lot of conversations between high-level Chinese officials and um, Russians, high-level Russians back during the Cold War about creating not a nuclear war, but, hey, what can we do besides having a nuclear war that would destroy everything? Well, hey, we can create a bioweapon. Yeah. So there's a lot of talks about this. So everyone's, you know, and I think patient zero is kind of the key. Whatever happened to patient zero is, is if we can find out what happened there, Yeah. the woman, then we can f trace back did, how did, you know, did it, was it an accident? Did she trip and fall and, you know, virus broke? Unlikely. <laughs> or did something specific happen? See, and I, we could talk about this. I mean, personally, I think what happened is there were two sides. Both knew she had this virus and one was trying to protect her with the virus and the other was probably trying to release it. And... Yeah, it's really hard to say. It's very right? hard to say. Well, because who would of... want that to get out unless it was very controlled, right? Exactly, exactly. It, and from our last episode, if what we said was true and that bioweapon was developed for the United States for biowarfare, they wouldn't have wanted that to just get out and spread in China, I don't think, do you? Well, unless 
so this is the weird thing with Jiang Zemin. Unless he knew that he was going to lose control, and he thought, well, okay, I'm just going to release just, the beast. Yeah, and if, even if I wipe out a city, I can test it and see what happens. Thinking in the future, you could release it more globally. Yeah. So I what mean, you're saying so is up. normal evil. Jong yeah. evil. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you have to understand. I mean, like we said earlier, I mean, Jong is literally accumulation of you know you got Ross, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, Clinton, Bush, Epstein, Soros, Don Corleone. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it is a mafia. Yeah, really, dude. Really. No, it really is. Like the, that, what they're running, and they're using the triad gangs as part of the mafia. And what's worse is that the media, the yeah. media over the Chinese media overseas is espionage and spying. Because think about it, the media can go places where a lot of these, you know, the military can't. They can even get inside the White House. Well, and even all of their media there is a, literally an arm of their propaganda, you know, yeah, and just government, I mean. Just within a couple of days, um, Trump, the White House released a statement saying they're cracking down on the Chinese media because they, they know this. They know that yeah. it's being used to spy. It. And yeah, so. isn't, uh, what's the name of the media company that owns the uh, the top of the Times Square? It's oh, uh, Xinhua. Xinhua News Agency. They're the, one of the, they are, they're, the, one the, of, that, if not that's the worst. official Chinese yeah. mouthpiece of the CCP. And is the top of Times Square, they own that, and they're just publishing their crap there in Times Square because they got a lot of money. And I think they want to be like, you know, with them, it's like, if they have that in Times Square when Chinese people, it's just like, look how big my thing is or whatever, right? It really like, is yeah. that. Yeah, and all. Anyway. So you guys, I think we can wrap this one up, but there's so much coming out. We're going to keep... Stay tuned. Keep, yeah, every day. I mean, man, we're just collecting so much information. And it's really hard because a lot of this is not in English. So we're trying to compile everything, put this in English. As of now, a lot, some of the stuff that we have in this our video isn't in English yet. So, yeah. uh, especially about the girl, I yeah. haven't really seen a lot of that in English. So, yet, so you are all hearing this first because we're actually have people going into the Chinese articles. Thank you, Cindy, again. Mm -hmm. And she's reading all of this stuff and feeding it over. So this hasn't actually published in English anywhere nope. yet. And then also now we're, we're really getting really strong Chinese contacts. So anyway, guys, until episode three, which is probably going to be as bombastic as this one. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. We'll see you out. On the edge.